Amen, amen. Good morning. It's Pastor Ryan, you guys. Uh, this is the time. If you have not done so already, go grab your bread and your wine.
hallelujah. How many of y'all this morning are glad that the blood never loses its power? How many of you really happy that this morning on this first Sunday of April, on this day that we're celebrating the risen Christ, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, death could not keep him down. The grave could not hold him, but he rose on this day after he was crucified on that Friday. On the third day, he rose again from the dead with all power in his hand for the remission of our sins. That blood that was shed on Calvary that flows down to the lowest value valley goes to the highest mountain no matter how many years that have gone by that blood will never lose its power i am so thankful and grateful that this love that this savior had for you and i that did not stop him from going to the cross his his power and his majesty didn't cause him to come off that cross to save the pain that he would suffer paying a debt that he did not owe repaying a debt that we could not repay for the redemption of our souls. I thank the Father this morning and we, we praise him for who he is and for what he has done. And so this morning, as we partake of the Lord's table, have your, your cracker, your bread and your juice ready or whatever it is you're going to drink and remember the sacrifice that our savior made on that cross that on this day that he was the night before, he had celebrated with this with his disciples and he explained what was going on and what this process was going to be and so we as believers in God and believers in Jesus Christ acknowledging that we need a savior that we are in need of redemption that we need a savior who will save us we we partake of this uh, as often as we can to remember the sacrifice that our father has made our savior has made for us that this love was so great that the father would send his very own son to die to go through things that he shouldn't have to go through to have his skin pierced and broken with the whip to have his beard plucked out to be spit upon to be mocked a crown of thorns placed into his head, nails driven into his hands and his feet while he suffered on this cross, treated as a common criminal, hung up between two thieves, a man who was innocent of all charges suffered the ultimate price laying down his life for us. And so God, we thank you this morning and we praise your name, giving you praise, glory and honor for being our God. We come to you this morning, acknowledging and recognizing Lord, the, the immense power that you generated when you came up out of the grave, that the death could not hold you down. The, gra the grave could not keep you from ascending to your proper place right next to the father at the right hand of the father. And God, we ask that as you, we celebrate your risen and your, your risen self coming up uh, out of the grave, that we remember the sacrifice, that we remember the pain, that we remember the fact that we could not repay this debt for every sin that is committed. Father, even on the cross, when you were in the midst of agony, you prayed for us. You said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even though we intentionally go out and sin, even though we intentionally cut people down, even though we intentionally turn our backs from you, you said, Father, forgive them. And so God, we ask this morning, if we have never come to you in a humble heart, if we have never come with a, a spirit of, the, of needing of forgiveness and needing your forgiveness, if we have ever come to this table, God, and not had a pure heart and a pure mind ready to accept the change that you're trying to make in our lives. I ask this morning that you forgive us for all the times that we abused this Lord's Supper. Forgive us for all the times that we took the bread and wine in an unworthy manner, God. Forgive us for all the times that we did not take it seriously, your death on the cross and what it means for our eternal salvation. And so we ask this morning, Lord, that this day, this first Sunday in April, the day that we acknowledge your resurrection from the, from the grave, that you do instill a change in our hearts, that this day will be the start of a new life. And so God, we remember the sacrifice that was made as you took the bread and you broke it. We take the bread and break and eat. Remember, and this is your body that was broken for our sins. And in the same manner, Lord, we take the wine. As you poured the wine, you said the wine represents the covenant 
the new covenant of the blood that was shed for the remission of sins, and we do take and drink. And so, Father, as we have taken this Lord's table, let us emerge renewed with spirits that acknowledge who you are at all times, that we be representative of the Christ, the Son of God, who rose on the third day after being crucified with all power and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We do acknowledge our manifold sins each and every time, and we are sorely sorry for what we have done. So Father, change in us and renew in us a right spirit that we will be your people and you will be our God. This I ask in the name of your magnificent son, the one who went to the cross willingly for the remission of our sins, the one who paid the debt we could not repay. It is in his matchless name, the name of which all knees will bow and all tongues will confess that he is Lord. It is in that name, Jesus the Christ, that we do pray and believe. And all of God's people, wherever you are around this place, say amen. Oh, amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you all. I am so glad that you are here with us. I am so glad that I'm actually here this day. Uh, things, the things can happen and we just don't know all the dangers that God has protected us from. We, we ask that he protect us from dangers seen and unseen. And we have no idea of all the unseen terrors that could have struck us down. So I am, do not take it lightly and I thank God uh, that I am here. Welcome to Road to Damascus Church. I hope that you were able to participate in the Lord's Supper with us and that moving forward that you will have a renewed uh, uh, passion a renewed spirit and a renewed heart to serve the Lord with gladness. Welcome to Road to Damascus Church. We are here, just people who love God and love each other. Uh, and as we move forward with our service, I just wanna remind everybody to prayerfully consider contributing to uh, our uh, extra campaign we call the Above and Beyond, that in 2021, we're asking everybody to prayerfully consider to sow in an additional $21 on top of your tithes and offerings uh, for a special fund. Uh, we just completed Q1. We're gonna do this for once a quarter. For each quarter, we're going to take that money from Above and Beyond and bless another ministry or organization that's doing work in the community. Uh, we just completed the first quarter, March 31st, and we successfully were able to raise uh, $1,648. And that first installment of Above and Beyond went to uh, uh, the, the charitable arm of my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. We call it Project Alpha LA. And this is a program that is geared towards mentoring our young men, young men to give them uh, something to look forward to. We take them around to different ventures, we, uh, places last year when we still had, or the year before when we still had, get, where we could gather in place. I took them to the Science Center in Downey, the Space Center, uh, where we're exposing these young men to STEM careers and STEM education. They, we uh, mentor them in interview skills, life skills, in uh, cleanliness and hygiene, how to tie a tie. You'd be surprised at how many young men when they don't have fathers in the home do not know how to tie a tie. They do not know how to conduct themselves in the presence of other men. They do not know how to conduct themselves in the presence of women. And this is what we do. And we uh, mentor them and offer scholarships and provide them away. So prayerfully consider an additional $21 uh, for the above and beyond. Uh, this quarter, uh, the uh, above and beyond, we'll be going to the YMCA, the Greater YMCA of Los Angeles. Uh, some of you uh, used to take, I used to take swimming lessons there. Some of you probably went and worked out, but the YMCA is more than just a place where you can go and take swimming lessons and work out. It, it is about helping people and some of the things that they do. Our own very much, Pastor Chris is very much
much involved with YMCA and he talks about the things that they do. He told me about the things that they do, uh, providing meals for children who don't have financial means or for families that don't have financial means, uh, helping families able to, with their ability to pay rent, uh, helping seniors get to and from appointments and uh, their ability to pay their uh, utility bills, uh, providing uh, computers and internet access for young people in schools who don't have access to those things. So this quarter, our, our above and beyond donations will go to the YMCA of Greater Los Angeles that we can make, be a part in helping people uh, have decent lives and give them some dignity. That is something that we as a society love to rob other people of is their dignity, believing that somehow that if we are above and they are beneath it, it is always their fault and not realizing that sometimes those of us who have risen to positions of power have stepped on those below us. And so we are just trying to give back and help those. So above and beyond $21 for the year 2021, prayerfully considered. Don't do this because Pastor Ron asked. Don't do it because you think, feel pressure because Pastor Ron is talking about it. Prayerfully consider, talk to God about it, look at your finances, and you make the choice of what you're going to do. Our scholarships are available, the application, it can be downloaded from our website uh, at w, uh, info at, uh, no, I'm sorry, www.r2dchurch.org. Uh, and so if you know anyone who has a graduating senior in the Los Angeles area going to a four-year college or university, they can apply for this scholarship. We're giving away $15,000 this year in scholarships and stipends. Uh, to uh, graduating high school seniors and to existing high school, uh, existing college students. Uh, the, the scholarships are uh, one time $1,000 for graduating high school seniors, including one scholarship that will be a $4,000 scholarship payable at $1,000 each year, provided that they are making satisfactory uh, academic pro progress. And for our existing college students, we're having 10 $500 stipends that we are going to award for existing college students to help them with books, fees, food, uh, whatever it is they need to make their life a little bit easier in college. And uh, so said direct anyone you know to our website, www.r2dchurch.org. And there's a tab for scholarships and there will be an application there they can download in PDF. It has all the information, what's needed, what's required and deadlines. And if they can't find it there, you can they can send an email to us at scholarships at r2dchurch.org and we can email them a scholarship application to them. This is what we're doing. And the reason why we're able to do it is because those of you, uh, many of you have been very generous partnering with us with your tithes and offerings. And we have four ways in which you can sow into this ministry. Uh, you could sow it uh, using PayPal at info at r2dchurch.org, info at r2dchurch.org. That'll give you uh, take us to our PayPal. Or you could use Givelify at Road to Damascus. Always remember it is the number two, not the word T-O, the number two. Cash app at dollar sign r2dchurch.org. Or you can mail a hard check to our post office box, post office box 1382 Norwalk, California 90651. And remember, your gifts and your partnering with us is helps us to be able to give out $15,000 in scholarships this year and hopefully next year be able to continue to do the same thing and the years beyond. Uh, we thank you and I bless you and I will see you shortly as we return to the service. God bless.
has changed since last Easter. The world has been shaken. Life has been disrupted. What we once called normal seems like it may never return. It's been easy to be discouraged, to lose hope, to feel the foundations of our faith begin to crumble. It's hard to keep our feet planted when the ground beneath feels like shifting sand. Now more than ever, 
we need to stand on the truth of Easter. A day which changed our eternity, changed our world forever. Death was defeated by life. Sin was consumed by mercy. The grave was swallowed up by victory. See, even in the darkest of moments, the love of Jesus could not be stopped. His faithfulness could not be broken. And when the dust settled, Jesus, he stood alive and victorious. Today, may we remember the truth of Easter, the power of the resurrection, and the promise of eternity. Yes, the world has been shaken, but the grave, it's still empty. And Jesus, he's still risen. Amen, amen. The grave is indeed still empty. Uh, I love that scripture they put there. Uh, why do you look for the living among the dead? Uh, you know, we are, are so grateful to see another day. I am so happy to be here with you. I am so uh, honored that you have taken the time to come to Road to Damascus Church this morning virtually. And as I always do, and I never take it for granted, and I'm gonna continue to do this. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you and too uh, believe that today is the day that the Lord has made and you have made it a, a priority in your hearts and minds to serve him uh, uh, in spirit and in truth, believing that today is the day that he made because there are people who woke up this morning uh, in a lot of pain, uh, people who woke up this morning to bad news, uh, people who woke up to life uh, continuing down a dark path, whether it is in the alleyway or living on the street that be has become their existence. But those of, who of us who are viewing this, this broadcast uh, woke up in our homes, in our beds, uh, with pillows and the comforts that make it nice to be at home and surrounded, hopefully, by people that we love. So we thank God this day uh, that we were able to participate in the Lord's Supper. We thank God this day that we celebrated and acknowledged the resurrection of our, our Lord and Savior. We thank uh, God this day that we know that we have the power, that our Savior was so obedient even unto death that he went gladly to the cross for you and I. And so God, we just ask that you humbly stay with us, that your love, this love that was so great that, that you would uh, uh, allow yourself, the king uh, of all the world, the king of all the earth, the king of all creation to be treated as a common criminal, the nails driven into your hands, nails driven into your feet, the spear that pierced your side, the mocking, the gambling and casting lots for your garments, putting on the cross here, the king of the Jews, putting a crown of thorns upon your head. Lord, we, we're sorry. We're sorry for the sins that, that took you to the cross. It was, it was our sins that, that put you there. It was our sins that, kept, that put you upon the cross and go, went through all the torment that you went through, but it was love. Your, your magnificent undying love that kept you there. It was your love that didn't strike down every sinner at that moment. It was your love that went all the way, even unto death, that you would have descend into the depths of hell to demonstrate your power, to demonstrate your majesty, to rise on that third day and ascend to sit next to God, the Father Almighty. So God, as we move forward, we ask that you continue to be with us, be with us through this service, change our hearts that we may experience a new birth, that you resurrect our spirit, that you resurrect our heart, that you res resurrect our lives, that we become new, forgetting the things of old and hanging on to what's coming ahead, that we will continue to run this race and for some of us to start to run the race 
the race that you have said before us. We love you, Father, and we bless you. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome this morning, uh, everybody. And, and what I want uh, us to not lose sight of, there are some people in our in our church family that have been uh, blessed, and we have some people that are still dealing with some loss, and we still want to be there for them in the good times and the bad. Uh, I just want to acknowledge, I don't know if she's good with this. I'm going to trust and believe that she's good with this. Uh, thank you guys that were participating in Bible study as we prayed for my cousin Lisa. She was looking for a new house and she texted me that the offer, uh, she made an offer and they accepted it. So we were, we just prayed that she would find a place that would be uh, good for her and her family. As a matter of fact, Isaac was the one that solicited that prayer and we prayed for her and God answered that prayer. So we, we stand and rejoice with you, uh, Lisa, in, in a, uh, going on moving forward with your life. We also wanna continue to pray for our dear brother, uh, uh, brother Jesse Jackson. Uh, we know that there has been some time since there was the death of his sister, but we are still standing with you, brother Jackson. If there is anything that you need at the time to talk or time to prayer, we are here for you. And those of us who are believers will continue to pray for you and uplift you uh, through this time because we know this is never easy. And on that same vein, our uh, sister Monica had posted that a year had passed since her mother has gone on to glory. And so we want to continue to pray for her and her family. Uh, this it, a year for, uh, for a lot of us seems like a long time, but it is not a long time when you are dealing with the loss of a mother. Uh, a mother who you loved and a mother who loves you. I am so grateful that my mother and my father are still here in the land of the living, but we stand with Sister Monica. We stand with Brother Jesse that we will continue to lift you, you both in prayer. That would include your family. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my wife reminded me of some things uh, that we continue to to lift you up in prayer. And that would also include my cousins, Deborah and Beverly, uh, losing my aunt, their mother, my aunt Margaret uh, Payton, uh, that this it, it's never, never easy. Uh, Mother's Day will be coming next month. And uh, those times are not easy. Those so we stand with you in prayer. Uh, we, we lift you up. Uh, we gird, uh, gird you up with the spirit of God. And I hope my daughter is watching this morning uh, with my grandson, my daughter and, and her husband, Jose. So if you are, good morning, Alex and Jose. But more importantly, good morning to my grandson, Zane. Pop, pop loves you. Mwah, mwah. I like he always blows kisses to everybody. So good morning, Zane. I hope he's there. And I hope uh, that we, we, as we go forward with service this morning, uh, that you indeed will be blessed. So let's go to the word of God. Uh, we are going to the New Testament Gospel of John chapter 13. And while I'm going to be dealing with uh, chapter 13 in its entirety as a theme, we're gonna focus on verse one uh, because I wanted to do a sermon that was a little bit not just about the the conquering death and not why are you still why are you looking for the living among the dead and not about why the stone was rolled away but talk about what it is that sent Jesus to the cross in the first place and so when we read this scripture in verse one it says now before the feast of Passover when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Uh, and so this morning, I want to use for a theme for, uh, for well, the, the duration of time that we have service, I want to use for a theme, what kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because as I was preparing and, and studying uh, what to, to bring this week. I had several things, but this, this idea of asking the question, what kind of love is this, continue to resonate in my spirit. It, it took me to several different places because I thought over the years that I had heard a song with that title. And then I realized the song that I was thinking of was the song by uh, the, the late Bishop Walter Hawkins, What Is This? 
uh, because he's talking about what is this that makes me feel this way? It makes me want to run on in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, it won't let me. Uh, 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 won't let me. I, I'm losing one of the train doing that off, right off the cup. But those those of you who appreciate good gospel music know that song by Bishop Walter Hawkins. But that's not uh, what what uh, the song or it wasn't actually what I wanted to deal with because you know we get to this place in the year we 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 reflect on the resurrection and we we reflect on the salvation that we are granted the eternal life that we are given through the blood of Jesus Christ but most of the time I don't think I have and I don't know if it's safe for me to assume for you that have we actually considered uh, the type of love that would allow an innocent man to bear the sins of the world forever as he would, we're not talking about just bearing the sins of the world at that time or bearing the sins of the people who were there. It's bearing the sins of the whole world for all time. Every sin that was committed, every sin that will ever be committed, were forgiven that day. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The perfect sacrifice, the blood that was required by our God was shed for us. Uh, every sin that was and will be committed was forgiven that day. And he loved us that much to take it on. And it, it, it still blows my mind to think, what kind of love is this that would, that would lay down his life for someone like me who lived a life that was so opposite of what he wanted, so opposite against everything he stood for, just complete rebellion to the word and to the way of which God is trying to move me as a young man, move me as an adult, just change my life. I'm sure some of y'all can sit out there and think if you reflect, you can think about all the times that God has intervened on your behalf and how many times you have turned your back against him. How many times have you been someplace and you think in your mind how you gotta, you stop from what you're about to do because you just about to go ham on somebody. Uh, and even if you did go ham afterwards, feeling the remorse, and some of us even don't even, don't even feel remorse afterwards. We feel justified in going off on folks. We feel justified in expressing our anger. We feel justified to let you know how frustrated I am with you and what you've been doing. We have never reflected on what the, the disappointment that we give to Jesus uh, and the fact that he still loved us, even though we disappoint him all the time, loved us enough to go to Calvary on our behalf. But I did find a song that was called, What Kind of Love Was This? And a couple of us lines from the song, it says, what kind of love is this that gave itself for me? I am the guilty one, yet I go free. Oh man, that just kind of messed me up sitting there thinking that he is, uh, uh, I'm the guilty one, but yet he is the one who, who, who paid, uh, he paid the price. He, he was the one that was treated as a common criminal. I am the guilty one, yet I go free. I get to live my life, but yet he gets whipped. I get to live my life and he has his beard plucked out. I get to live my life, he gets spat upon by the people who sneered and jeered at him. I get to live my life, but he is stretched out on the cross with his hands pierced by nails. He is the one that had his feet pierced by nails and then strung up on a cross for hours in between two common criminals. I got to go free, but a spear went into his side. Uh, it says in the song, what kind of man is this who died in agony? He did no wrong, was crucified for me. Let's see. When we go through this, this resurrection period of time, we, we come and we wear our, our new clothes and our pastel colors. I even dressed up, got a little traditional today, put on my shirt and tie and a little sweater vest uh, because I know there's some folk that are still stuck in the, this idea of what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to look like on the outside. But there are very few of us are talking about what we're supposed to look like on the inside. Huh. 
You see, when we're talking about what kind of love is this, this love that Jesus Christ had had nothing to do with what he looked like on the outside. It had nothing to do with how he looked, if he was looked dressed in the proper robe, if he wore the right tie, if he had on the right suit and the right shoes, that his bag didn't match his, his uh, the bag and his shoes didn't match, or however you guys and women do your stuff. It had nothing to do with any of that, but everything to do with his heart. And what was it? Where is his heart? It is inside. Yeah, so we 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 should be causing to think, what is it that's really important to us as believers? What where are we trying to go in this thing we call this Christian walk? Are we trying to give this appearance that we look prosperous and that God has blessed us with all these material things and big houses? fancy cars and nice clothes, or are you looking at what God is truly trying to bless you with, with a new heart? David wrote in, in Psalm 51, 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. See, David wasn't asking, give me a bigger castle, God. Give me more purple robes, God. Give me more gold chains, God. Give me all these things that everybody will know that how blessed I am. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. See, this morning, we should not be worried so much about the Easter egg hunt and the Easter egg bunny or the Easter pails and all the other stuff that we have lumped into this time and start looking and asking the question, what kind of love is this that would send a man, <laughs> uh, that will send a man to death for something he had nothing to do with? Let's, let's go back to the to the first the, the, the first verse in John chapter 13. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Oh, God, thank you. Uh, you see, he loved them to the end. It, he's not talking about this, this uh, uh, that he just loved them for a short time. You, you know, we as human beings, we, we love people as long as it's convenient for us. We, we love uh, people as long as it's comfortable for us. We, we love people as long as they continue to do and live up to the expectations that we set for them. Because as soon as they step out of line, then we cut them off. As soon as you go against what I believe you should be doing, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. As soon as you start behaving in a manner and, and acting out in a way that I do not agree with, well, we got nothing else to talk about. Uh, but it didn't say, Jesus didn't say that. It said he loved them to the end. And, and that even took me deeper in my study to the, the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, verse 3. And it says that Jeremiah is speaking. He says, the Lord appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. See, when Jesus, when they said Jesus loved them to the end, this is what he's talking about. I loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Uh, as some of some people have read that believe when he says that I've drawn you, he you know fashion you know, he's saying, I have drawn you to me. I, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, out of this love that's inside of me, I have drawn you to me. I have put something here in place that will allow you to come to me. I, I have established my covenant with you that you can come to me because I have loved you with an everlasting love. And, and you know, it, it's hard to hear those words, everlasting love, and not think about Rufus and Shaka Khan singing their song, Everlasting Love. It's a good song. Matter of fact, while I was preparing this, I had to play it on my uh, my Echo Dot just so I could hear it, get a little groove going while I'm working. And I had to stop and say, wait a minute, let me get my focus right back where it needs. But see, when we talk about an everlasting love, do you really understand what everlasting means? Because because I had to look it up <laughs> and he said he loved us to the end that he loved us with an everlasting love and when he says that he loved us with an everlasting love that's a love that lasts forever <laughs> a love that goes to eternity now tell me this morning to anybody out there that uh that that loves someone can truly say that you love them with an everlasting love meaning 
that no matter what, you will love them forever. You probably woke up this morning mad at somebody that you said you love. Uh, they woke up this morning still mad about something you said to them yesterday or last week or last month or last year. You see, we, we as believers, we, we continue to live this life that we, we, we play around with this thing we call church. We play around with this thing we call a relationship with Jesus. And all the time we're living these lives that have just been rooted in, in, in nothing but mess, and anger, bitterness, disappointment frustration, but Jesus having dinner with his boys. He's, he's fellowshipping with them. And he says he knows that his time was coming, but he loved them to the end. I have to ask, what kind of love is this? Uh, you know, the, this kind of love that would save a wretch like me? What kind of love is this that would look past my faults and see what I need? What, what kind of love is this that would forgive me time and time again, even though I know the right way I do what's wrong? Just like Paul said, I, I did it as a sin that I continue. The things that I know I should do, I don't. But the things that I do, uh, uh, that shouldn't do, that as what I do. And yet this love still comes after me. What kind of love is this that would pay a debt that I owe? What, what kind of love is this that would allow himself to be brutalized and humiliated? Uh, what kind of love is this that in the midst of suffering that would ask the Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? What kind of love is this that this Lord would give his life? <laughs> What man to give his life for many? The word tells us that in the beginning, that through, through Adam, the whole world is born into sin. Ah, but be, through one man, all the world is saved. What kind of love is this that would willingly let this man go to the cross for us? Isaiah 50, Isaiah gives us a little glimpse into the prophetic part of the word of God. It's in Isaiah 50, verse 5 through 6, the Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. He was obedient unto death all the way. He said, the Lord opened my ears and I, I was not rebellious. I did not turn away. He, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from the shame and spitting. It is Isaiah is prophetically speaking about what our God is going to have to go through for us. What, what kind of love is this that would allow him knowing that when he came to this earth that he would be going uh, to death to suffer agony? for you and me. David wrote in Psalm, Psalm 22, verse 16 and 18, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. And they we're dealing with the prophetic word in the Old Testament, foretelling what was going to happen to our Lord and Savior. Then in verse 18, they divide my garments among them for they cast lots as they did when Jesus was on the cross at his feet. Instead of bowing down, worshiping him, they're bowing down, casting lots on who's going to get his clothing. What kind of love is this in knowing this is the future, knowing that this is what's going to happen, knowing of what's going to come, and even after it, knowing that people would still turn their back that there would still be people who would reject him, that there would still be people that commit enough sin to put him on the cross. What kind of love is this? I'm gonna tell you what kind of love this is. It's the kind of love that dines with people who betray him. I see in verse two, it says, and supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yeah. This, you ask the question, what kind of love is this? This is the kind of love it is. A love that would dine with people who got their knives ready to plunge into his back. How many of y'all have, have had these people that you have cut off and stayed away from because you know they aren't loyal, because they've been devious, uh, they want to talk about you behind your back? 
talk about your clothes that you had on. Why were they wearing that? Did you see that dress? Look at that haircut. When are they gonna go cut them, uh, cut that hair off and trim up this and trim up that? Why are they wearing that to church? Uh, but when we know and we find out, we get angry and we cut people off. We cut them out of our lives. We don't have one, anything to do with them. But Jesus knowing, not that someone was just talking about how he dressed, wasn't talking about his hair, wasn't talking about the house, wasn't talking about the car. He, this is someone who was getting ready to sell him out to death. And yet he still sat there and fellowship with him. Jesus had the type of love that still dined with those who betrayed him. Uh, see, when we, we see this, we talk about this, uh, 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 this hatred that starts to develop in people and biblically and churchy, churchy folks will talk about the, that we're allowing the bitter root to sink, set in. Uh, this root, this bitterness of anger and hostility towards those instead of being able to be open and forgiving to let them sit at our table and we feed and dine with them. No, 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 this type of attitude we have is this bitter, this bitter root that, that comes in. And, and when we refuse to love, we allow bitterness to grab a hold. Y'all sitting out there sometimes so mad at folk, so unforgiving that you're bitter with life. You're bitter with everything. You can't find joy, peace, or happiness in anything that's going on in the world because you are so bitter forgetting about the love that to, to ask that question what kind of love is this that would allow a man to experience this much hate and resentment and attack from people even though he's innocent and still go to the cross for, uh, for us for you and yet you're bitter now you know when when trash sits out for a while and it's not that's one of the reasons why we put a top on the trash can. It's to keep the critters out, but it also contain that smell because that bitter stench comes from, from the trash that's rotting and sitting there. And if you've ever been to a place or near a place where they, they dump the trash, you can smell it for miles around. And you know what? Bitterness stinks. And so you may not physically stink, but you y'all know you've been around some bitter folks. Their personality stinks. Nobody wants to be around people who are bitter because they stink. The stench of your unforgiveness, the stench of your unlovingness, the stench of your unkindness, the stench of your hatred. Look at what we have going on in this United States right now. The stench that emulates from the state of Georgia as they try to disenfranchise again black and brown people, making it harder for people to vote, limiting voting locations. How, how you go limit locations for a lot of people who have uh, limited access to transportation. Then you put this insane rule in there so you know that, uh, that you can't make it illegal to give food and water to people who are voting because you are setting up a situation to where people you're hoping they get discouraged in long lines and tired and want to go eat. So now if you have a group of people who decide we are going to uh, uh, provide food for voters, we're going to provide water, you want to make it illegal. The stench of hatred coming from Georgia reaches to heaven. What kind of love is this that a savior would go to, cross, go to the cross for the very same people who authored and signed that into law. Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, 31, he said, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away with you with all malice, put away from you with all malice. And he, he already acknowledges that we, we cannot go to the Father when we have this bitterness. You cannot go to the Father with hatred and anger and wrath in your life. Jesus was going to the Father. It is said in the very first script, that first chapter or first verse, that he knew his time was coming, that he was leaving this world to go to the Father. He could not go to the presence of God with bitterness, anger, and wrath. What kind of love is this? The love that would dine with those who would sell him out. The kind of love that would allow him to go to the cross to bear the sins of the world. He couldn't go to the Father if he wasn't there. Uh, here's a, what kind of love is this? Let me tell you, not only is the kind of love that, 
that will dine with his betrayers. It's a love that will serve his betrayers. You see, in verse five, it says, after that, this is after they eat, uh, they had, had to sit in the supper in, in verse two or three. Uh, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Oh, boy. I already know some of y'all in your minds. You're thinking, I ain't, number one, I ain't washing nobody's feet, but I'm certainly not washing the feet of someone who has betrayed me. I'm not going to wash the feet of someone who's talking about me. I'm not going to wash the feet of those who are attacking me. But you can't go to the Father with that anger, malice, bitterness, clamor. Uh, we just read that with Paul as, as establishing. You, you're trying to live your life uh, and be more like Christ. Uh, well, that means that you're going to have to uh, uh, serve your betrayers. What kind of love is this? This is the love that Christ demonstrates. The kind of love we're supposed to show to the world. The kind of love we're supposed to show to God's people, our brothers and sisters. Resurrection day means nothing if we're still going to be walking around in the same condition. This, this, this idea of we're just okay where we are, no, that, that, that ain't so. Uh, we got to be able to dine with our betrayers. We have to be able to serve our betrayers because that demonstrates love. Uh, matter of fact, later on in John 13, verse 34 through 35, he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. With what kind of love was that? An everlasting love. He says that you also love one another. There's no condition in there. He didn't say if they treat you right. He didn't say if they like you. He didn't say as long as they agree with everything you do. <laughs> he said, love one another. By this, all will know you are my disciples. If you have love, for one another. If we ask the question, what kind of love is this? That he's telling you that this is a love that you display, that you love one another. And it's the type of love that when people see it, they will know that we come from him. That we are his. He says they will know, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Verse one said he loved them until the end. Jeremiah 31 said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have loved you with an eternal love, a love that extends to forever. I have loved you with that. And this morning, as we acknowledge the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we have to adopt that posture a posture of love. Here's the last thing. So we I said, we got to, you got a love that's going to dine with your betrayers. You got love that's going to uh, uh, serve your betrayers. But here's the most important part. You need to have a love that trusts God. Let's see, you can't do all this stuff on your own. This is, this is stuff that you have to do believing in God. Verse three says, Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God. Do I need to read that again? Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God. Yes, this is the trust. We don't believe what God has said. We, we, we go through life not believing in anything that the word says. We, we, we lean on our own understanding instead of believing in God. When Proverbs says, uh, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. This is Jesus was not leaning on his earthly, his fleshly uh, knowledge. He was dealing with his trust in God. His love 
this love that he had meant he had to trust God and said that he knew that God had given all things into his hand. And when God has said that he would never leave us nor forsake us, that is the truth. When God says that you would be the head and not the tail, that you would be a lender and not a borrower, that is the truth. When God said that wherever your feet tread, that I will make that your ground, that is the truth. But we don't trust God. The kind of love that Jesus is displaying is the kind of love that trusts God in all things and at all times. Here, here's something else in the Old Testament. Let's go back to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 50, uh, prophesying about our Messiah. It says, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I will not be ashamed to set my face like Flint and say, I'm keeping the straight face. I'm keeping it where it's supposed to be. I'm keeping it 100, as we would say, uh, that all because I know my, my sovereignty is certain. My, my salvation is certain. The love that my father has for me is certain. The promises that God has made to me are certain. I don't have to worry about all these things that are happening <coughs> over here. Because God said it, and I believe it, and that sells it. That's it. I trust him. That's what, what Jesus is saying. He, he, he's saying that this is, this is it. This is the kind of love I have that I have to trust God, because if I don't trust God, I can't sit down at a table with those who are betraying me. I can't serve those who are betraying me, but because I love God, I trust him. I can put all these things aside and go and still sit at the same table with somebody ready to kill me, that I can sit there and humble myself and wash the feet of those, do something nice for somebody who does nothing but talk bad about me. This is why Paul wrote in, in 1 Corinthians 13 about love. He said, love can bear all things when you trust God. Love can hope in all things when you trust God. And then because you trust God, love can endure all things. Paul even said, love never fails. And let me tell you, the reason why we know love never fails is because our savior went to the cross on our behalf and rose again on the third day. That's how we know that love never fails. What kind of love is this? It's a love that extends throughout time and eternity. What kind of love is this? It's a love that allows us to dine with those who betray us. It's a love that allows us to serve those who dislike us. It's a love that allows us to trust God, to know that our enemies will be our footstools, that our enemies could not prevail against us if we trust God. So this morning, as we celebrate the risen Christ, let's look deeper. That's our theme for 21. 2021 to go deeper. Let's look deeper beyond the, the, the cross and the grave, but the motivation that led him there, the love that Jesus displayed. So what are you going to do in your walk with Christ? What are you going to do in your, your daily reading, your daily living and believing and trusting in God? Are you going to let love come in that, that this idea of a love permeate through each cell in your body, through all of your fibers, that you will follow his example as he said, love one another as I have loved you by this, all will know that you are my disciples. This is your chance this morning that if you do not know Christ in the remission of your sins that you can come and have Christ be your Lord and Savior. 
Romans 10 and 9, written by Paul, says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you would be saved. So this is your time to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you need a Lord and Savior. This will help you understand more deeply the kind of love that Jesus has for us. And if you're looking for a church home, you have, you've been a part of other ministries, you've been out of church for a while, and you need a church you need to partner with, Road to Damascus is, a is I can think of no other place than Road to Damascus. No, we're not a big church. We're not even a medium-sized church. We're an itty-bitty tiny church. But we're filled with people who love God, who are trying to be better. As we walk down this road to Damascus, God is continually changing us to be new creatures, not the old one. I could offer my hand to you to become a part or partner with Road to Damascus Church wherever you are in LA, in Fontana, in Atlanta, in Michigan, in Texas, wherever you are, you can be a part of this ministry. We will welcome you in because God wants all of us to be a part of this fellowship and to understand more and more of him that we will know the answer to that question. What kind of love is this? And so we continue to grow and we continue to, to grow and I mean spiritually grow and we continually to walk and we will continue to love and pray for each and every one of you. Uh, I think that's all I have for today. Oh, I was yeah, you could send us an email at info at r2dchurch.org, info at r2dchurch.org, or you could go to our website, uh, www.r2dchurch.org, uh, or you could just simply write a question or, or your, your statement of faith in the chat on Facebook or YouTube uh, that you want to be a part of this ministry or that you want, need prayer. We will pray with you in Jesus name. Oh yeah. And because this is the new month, uh, thank you. My wife reminded me of this. Uh, this is April. So we have April birthdays. I forgot my little graphic with the birthdays that to put up there. We uh, and the anniversaries. I don't know of any anniversaries in April, but I do know that we got three birthdays in the Jackson family in April, the Jackson J3. Uh, I mean, there's more of them, but there's just three of them have birthdays in, in April. Uh, Jesse, Andre, and uh, Janae. Uh, so we are uh, thankful. I know that they're spread out in the month of April towards the middle and going towards the back, uh, but we acknowledge them. Huh? Oh, how could I forget? My daughter, her birthday was April 2nd, Alexandria. My daughter, my firstborn daughter, uh, Alexandria. Happy birthday, sweetie. I had, uh, had this really nice post for her on Facebook showing her when she was a little girl and when I actually married her uh, to her wonderful husband, Jose. I had the privilege of not only walking her down the aisle, but I also officiated her wedding, uh, which just did my heart so much joy because she has been a great uh, a daughter, a wonderful daughter. Every father should have a daughter like Alexandria and every uh, uh, father should have a son-in-law like Jose marry their daughter. He is a, a wonderful young man, a perfect husband for my perfect daughter. And she is not perfect in the world since she is perfect in my eyes and that's all that matters. Uh, and of course, my grand, they produce my grandson. So <laughs> whose birthday is next month? So remember to say happy birthday to Zane in May. Uh, I think that's it. Continue in your daily Bible reading. We are reading the chronological Bible one year. Uh, if you haven't got this Bible, you can get it on Amazon and join in with us. Uh, we, have, we have caught up and a lot of stuff is happening. One of the questions I ask on our Facebook group is that we got through reading about Gideon and Gideon's name was changed as he changed. Ask the question, and this is something we should strive for, not only asking about what kind of love is this, but also are we uh, far, far enough along on our Christian walk that we have changed, that we would have a new name if we were written about in the Bible. And that's what we're trying to be different, grow and change that we can be more and more pleasing to God. So I think that's it, that's all I have. And so what I wanna say to y'all is that I love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. And as we depart 
from this place, but never from the presence of God. I ask that the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, y'all be blessed. And we all say together, amen. Amen and have a good day. Clippers play the Lakers today. I predict the Clippers victory. I'm excited that UCLA lost yesterday. The Dodgers won. Yes, it's all good. Happy Resurrection Day, everybody. Y'all be blessed. I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Have a good rest of the week and I will see you on Wednesday.